Hi, and welcome to a quick word from God. My name is Marvin McCollin, and this is Trayvon Taylor. Trayvon Taylor, and uh, Trayvon is, excuse me, was in the Marine Corps, and he has a very interesting story to tell. And uh, so I just thought it would be great that um, people heard the story of a man and not even just his story but this story portrays um, the reality of what many men and women go through in different branches of the military and so Trevon um, you being a Christian you know in the military in uh, the Marine Corps uh, how did how did you juggle you know that lifestyle that you had to undergo along with your faith well um first of all you have to realize that uh um it, it it was a call from god to me you know first of all god did call me uh to go to the marine corps uh i know a lot of people would think that that's like sounds like maybe a contradictory of terms or whatever the case is but i know specifically it was uh um it was prophesied um when I was a young child to my mother, when I was a, a young child that I would be going, uh, God was going to use me and he was going to uh, put me through the military. Um, and then once again, when I was about 11 years old, um, a, a woman had a, a word of knowledge that uh, your son, you know, he, he's going to go into the military and God has a call on his life. Um, so um, um, all this uh, transpired. I wasn't even looking into the military. I wasn't looking into any kind of branch of service or anything like that. I wanted to go to college, play football, and all that stuff like that. But, but God chose me. Uh, God uh, guided me in a separate uh, direction, uh, and uh, he 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 opened the door for me to go to the Marine Corps, um, and that's what that's I great. did. But uh, in balancing uh, that, you know, I. Uh, always kept God uh, uh, in my heart and God close you know obviously there are a lot of people that weren't saved but I had a lot of friends that you know that, that were saved and uh, that I got a chance to really minister to uh, while in the Marines so. that's wonderful okay so so the first thing you're saying here is that you were called to it and that because yeah. there was a calling there yeah there was peace for you to go into exactly it. that's good I had much peace that's Absolutely. great that's great Absolutely. okay that's wonderful I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that and so uh, for I guess anyone that is looking uh, to go into the military of any way, shape, or form, um, or just to go into any area or arena of life, to understand that God has to call you into uh, whatever it is. So, um, just being being in the military, and I, I wonder just how was it as far as you know your witnessing grounds. How were you able to witness, you know, just oh, wow. being in such an atmosphere where people are dying around you and <laughs> yeah. you're getting shot up? How did you witness? <laughs> well, um, I was in the Marine Corps for about 12 and a half years. A lot of people don't know. I, I know I didn't mention that earlier. I was 12 and a half years in the Marines. Um, I know uh, in my last tour, especially in Iraq, I did three combat tours in Iraq. Um, I know in my last tour, especially, I had like... Uh, a lot of Bible studies. I even preached a sermon on a Sunday uh, morning, I think on Wednesday night or something like that. One of the services I preached a, uh, a sermon and I actually helped my own Bible studies there. Um, and uh, I mean, it was wonderful. The Holy Spirit came in, ran in, in those places and it was really great. People like, I even had, you know, a couple of atheists there, people that wanted to know like, you know, what it was about. That It, it brought curiosity um, because um, your light, the, the light that you portray is is has a tremendous it is is so important with that because you know if uh, if I didn't portray a certain light if I didn't show Jesus in my lifestyle you know even in a place of chaos and things like that I had a total calm even in firefights even in certain things I really had a calm mm -hmm. because the fact that I always um uh, 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 had Psalms 91 that I always I read every day. I kept it with me. I kept a Bible right here in my in my chest pocket, um, always reading Psalms 91, and I continued to claim that. And that's something you have to do. Like if you want the Word to manifest in your life, and it, and, and and you continue to have that Word come down into your heart, it'll give you peace. Mm -hmm. It'll give you you know a, a confidence. You have this confidence. The proverb said, the righteous are as bold as a lion. You know, I had no fear when, you know, in uh, in situations that come up where, 
you know, we had to, uh, we had contact with, you know, enemy units and things like that. So, I mean, that's, it, it, the word of God and the spirit of God gives you such a peace and a boldness wow. to go out and go out what God has anointed you to do. That's the word of God at its best, you know, <laughs> right there. Um, it's just so, uh, it's so amazing that you mentioned Psalms 91 and mm -hmm. because Psalms 91 speaks of God being our fortress and God being our protector. Um, it's just, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing uh, to see the reality of that scripture oh, yeah. and what God has done for you now. Um, just, just to go off of that, uh, I remember you telling me something about um, your entire unit, you know, being, <laughs> being <laughs> preserved by God. And that it was one of the uh, first times, actually the, the first time that it happened. Yeah. So if you want to share that. Well, um, absolutely. I mean, this is like one of my uh, most amazing testimonies of my life. Um, the, uh, the first time I went to Iraq was in 2003. A lot of you probably remember the, the news when, you know, when we were first about to uh, enter into Iraq from uh, Kuwait. Uh, I was right there at the line. When you saw, when, when, when you watched the news and they were talking about that, I was right there at the border waiting for uh, George W. Bush to give the word to go cross over. I was right there. Um, so, but, but in that, in, in, in that uh, first, uh, uh, in, in that first tour that I went back in 2003, uh, we didn't lose, we didn't lose anyone. Okay. Uh, we, um, we had, there was actually one person that got his finger actually shot off, but he was holding a pair of binoculars and the bullet ricocheted off, right. off of the, off of the binoculars right. and actually saved his life. But the, it was the next two times that was the most amazing to me. And this is, this is the reason why I went back again in 2007 and again, I think in 2008. Uh, and during, the, before we actually went, uh, there was a unit that we were taking over. Uh, that actually lost about already lost about 23 guys and had 250 casualties wow. at the time that we wow. were going to go take their position over uh, um, in an air, this this very very dangerous area in Iraq, which was considered one of the most dangerous areas at the time. We went to this place, and before we before we went there, um, I prayed and I was like, uh, Lord, I know you're going to protect me. I know you're going to hold me because I know you have a call in my life, and I know. This is definitely not my time, and no man can take my life unless you actually, you know, uh, uh, give the permission to. My life is in your hands. But I said, Lord, show yourself strong and protect the whole unit. And mm -hmm. there's about a thousand, about a thousand or so, give or take, uh, men in my unit. And so uh, I said, show yourself strong and protect my unit. And the Lord came to me through a prophet and says, uh, the Lord says he has heard your prayer and has honored your prayer. And he says, uh, uh, one three. The name of the unit was one three. First Battalion, Third Marines, based out of Hawaii. The you Marines out there will know probably exactly what I'm talking about. I'm sure you have some Marines probably watching this. But uh, one three will be the unit that will stand, is what she says. And I was, I was like, wow. I actually wrote a letter to my commanding officer, an anonymous letter, saying that the Lord says that no one will will be uh, will, will die in this in this uh, unit. Everyone will come home. And so this has not happened in this area. Now this is a very dangerous area. They've already lost 23 Marines, 250 casualties. We go into this place and uh, 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 amazingly, I've, I've heard a lot of, there's so many testimonies of people getting, uh, walk, uh, or insurgents coming up to Marines and start to try to shoot, shoot them and the, the, the gun will not go off. And so, I mean, I've heard these testimonies and things like that. These things were going on during that time. And the worst I think we've had was like a concussion and I'm talking about roadside bombs blowing up, like de demolishing the vehicle and every Marine getting out of the vehicle, walking out away from this exploded vehicle. I mean, amazing stories that I heard. And um, then we actually uh, uh, come to a place where we all came, the whole unit came home without losing anybody. Totally amazing and wow. I still have the newspaper article that says one three beats the odds like you know run three brings all Marines home and so it was so amazing and um, and remember I did write that letter to my commanding officer stating that this was gonna happen and I gave him scripture references on it what the Lord says uh, what the Lord said and also when we went back the, the next time the same testimonies the same things were going were going on 
uh, and it was just so absolutely amazing mm -hmm. on how God did that and uh, uh, it's I just I just praise God for that mm -hmm. on how God did that and uh, uh, it's I just I just praise God for that and like if you I'm telling you if you if you the, the Word of God is true the Word of God is so powerful there's nothing that can penetrate the blood of Jesus. I don't care that the word of God says, though the eighth I'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and you cannot get any closer right. than that. <laughs> Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it says, I will fear no right. evil, for thou art with me. You have to understand and know that that's true. When you have that in your heart, there's nothing that can penetrate the power of yeah. the word of God. Yeah. It is true, it is powerful and it will change your life and it will be a strong testimony to everyone around you yeah. to everyone around you wow wow so. that, that that's amazing when the, when the first time you told me about that yeah I, I was thinking to myself how is that possible <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. but I, and I, I do realize with god all things are possible but um i can just remember seeing a lot of different things and I've never been close to war. I've mm -hmm. never known what it was like. Uh, but the stories that I have heard, it's it sounds very gruesome. And I've spoken to other Marines also who uh, shared with me their stories about um, the death that they saw, um, things they saw right before their eyes. And I, I wondered to myself, how do you guys, you know, cope with that? that aspect of, of war, of seeing, you know, mm -hmm. people die in front of you, having to yourself um, take lives, you know, mm -hmm. and so how, how, how do you cope with that, you know, with, with God, you know, what, what is it that... You know, the Word of God says, the Lord will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. You, you know, this is, you see what I'm saying? This is, this is a piece that, I mean, we've had people that, that actually went crazy and things like that. We didn't lose anybody in our own specific units while I was there because this is the promise that God gave. So did I see any of my friends die or any of my friends die? No, I did not, okay? Mm -hmm. But as far as obviously I saw civilians, you know, I saw a lot of gruesome things that, you know, when, when we had, when we were in firefights and things like that, and I mm -hmm. saw a lot of, you know, nastiness I don't have to go into. But at this, a lot of people will come back and say, when I, you know, if I explain to some people what I saw, they'd be like, oh man, you know, you know, how, how'd you deal with that? Or how you come back and how can you just talk about that? And I was like, I was like, it's no problem. Cause you know, I was, I was like, I, I didn't have an issue, you know, <laughs> you know, I saw it and I just said, Ugh, you know, mm -hmm. and it was just like, wow. And, but it never bothered me. I never had a, you know, I, I never had nightmares. I never, it never like bothered me mentally, but cause that, that, peace that God gave me when you're anointed man you have to remember going back to what we started we started from when God calls you into something he anoints you for it yeah. he's not going to send you somewhere for it to to to, to uh, negatively affect you matter of fact it will strengthen you when God calls you somewhere it actually strengthens you it, it it's going to do something to bring him glory because that's basically what it's about we're here to give God glory yeah. and we all have different paths that we have to take mine was Marines may yours may be something else you know um, but it, whatever it is, if God called you there, He anointed you for that. And there's no one better that can take that place than you for your specific job. You got to remember that because God created you. He's your creator. He's your, uh, uh, he's your designer. He designed your life. He wrote out the, he, he knew uh, before you were born the roads and paths that you were taking, the paths that He's laid out for you. Right. You know, so just like it says in Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you. It's mm -hmm. to, it's to, it's to, uh, not to harm you, but to bless you. You know, right. so we uh, when we understand when because I knew I was anointed for it, mm -hmm. and uh, it you know I, I it gave me more strength that God called me there, faith. and nothing yeah there exactly faith, nothing would be able it would not affect me negatively at all That's whatsoever, good. and it, it, and it was a witness. The the good part about it is the exciting part about it is it was a witness to mm -hmm. so many because they mm -hmm. saw it and said, how did you do it? And when I explained it to them, they're just amazed, like, wow, right. that's so amazing. That and, is. and you know, and, 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 and this, this is the light that Jesus was talking about. This is why he says, we are the light of the world. We are the salt.
salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, when we go out and witness, it's not necessarily, you don't have to always go out and just say, Jesus, 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 your life shines and shows Jesus automatically and people yeah. are going to be people are going to be drawn because right. if Christ is lifted up you will draw all men unto me and if the light of Jesus the light of Jesus is shining in you and shining out of you then oh my gosh it's going to draw people you see what I'm saying mm -hmm. to Christ you know what I'm saying Paul says follow me while I follow Christ and you can introduce him to Christ through your life amen and through these testimonies just like that one. That's wonderful. Well, so. <laughs> that is so amazing here. <laughs> Once again, it's so great to hear. And like, it's, it's obvious that uh, Trevon's very passionate about you know, his testimony uh, because, because this is God's glory. This Amen. is God's glory. Amen. Um, and so, you know, with, with all that being said, I just wanted to encourage um, anyone that's listening, um, if you're going through any struggle, any, any pain, any hurt, uh, just just remember this: that God is your refuge, that He's your protector. Whether you're in in the office, whether you're in school, whether you're on the battlefield, God is your protector. Amen. No matter what area of life you're in, and uh, specifically, I feel strongly that there's the majority of people that'll be watching this um, that you need to be protected from depression. Amen. Um, God wants to de um, protect you from depression, and I want I want you. Um, even as Trevon had to do in the time of battle and war, is to look to God. That's what you have to do. Amen. Do not look to depression. Do not look to your sickness or your pain or whatever it is, your ailment. Look to God, all right, because He is your protector, Amen. all right? And so with that being said, uh, Trevon, if you would like to, to close it out at the with the word of encouragement for maybe someone that's in the Marines mm -hmm. or... Um, someone that is will be going into um, any military um. sure sure well I, I just want to let you know um, first of all keep God close keep God close I mean I'm telling you um, there's nothing that can hurt you as long as God has his arms around you nothing can penetrate the blood of Jesus I'm telling you when you continue to keep the word in you the Lord watches over the word that's in you keep the word that's in you and, and, and that that word will manifest in your life no matter what it is even if it's not military where even if it's you know if you're in school and you're starting to struggle even if you know the Lord will empower you the Lord will give you what you need to be able to make it through that so you can be a testimony to somebody you always have to remember that it always gonna go back to the glory of God it's always gonna go back to the glory of God so the Lord will call you in certain places maybe it's the military for you, those of you that are in the military and you guys are having you having a hard time those of you that might be watching this right now from overseas you know in Afghanistan right now remember remember that that, that the Lord God will protect you he will keep you he will honor his promises just like he promised that he wouldn't have anyone touch anyone in my whole unit the Lord will protect you and all your loved ones and people around you your whole unit will keep what he will keep he will keep them if you, just by you he will do it for you specifically they don't have to be saved they don't have to but they can be that light as you continue to have that light you will draw them you will draw them remember that and, the, and keep the word in, in you and you will be just fine come out and be a witness amen amen to that. <laughs> well, thanks so much for all we appreciate right. you coming on a quick word from god absolutely um please leave your comments and if you have any questions you can go ahead and leave those too um, thank you so much for listening. God bless you.